Hey there my friends, it's Lucas J here from Black and Tan Productions and most of y'all know me from music but a few of y'all know I also enjoy carpentry and woodwork on the side. So I uh, recently purchased a nailer slash stapler 68019 item 68019 central pneumatic 18 gauge 2 in 1 air nailer stapler. So this is you know one of the cheaper tools, this is available at Harbor Freight simple little tool you've got your air inlet it's got a latch that releases allows you to load your staples or brads you've got a latch on the front that releases for a jam when it's locked up you've got a trigger here an air deflector I'm going to turn that away from the cameras for you so far so good I'll give you a quick look at the tool it's a solid tool feels pretty good. I mean, these parts are plastic, but they, they feel like they, you know, could take a good hammer to them before they break. You know, this is a tool that needs oil daily. If you're not using an oil system, then you need to drop a few drops of oil into it before you use it or after every hour of continuous use. So, I've got a couple of different wood products here. I've got a kind of composite fiber board or something MDF-like kind of material. I got some pine, I'm pretty sure, white white pine and then I've got I think it's an oak 2x4 so you know it's all scrap wood perfect for us to test on and see how it does this does require a compressor I've got a little pancake compressor down there but you know just to quick connect it onto there um, safety first they suggest you use they suggest you use ear protection so I'm not going to keep these on the whole time, but we'll do it real quick for this part of the video. Um, when it comes to loading it, I prefer to load it before I've connected it here. This is how simple it is to load. You just pop that latch, releases it on the back, and then load them in. These are the Central Pneumatic Brad's 18 gauge, 1 and 1 quarter inch. So, you know, here's a little piece of them. It's probably about... 16, 15, 16. Um, there is a handy way to see how many you have. Now, you notice the red in here, the different color that comes up this way. It will continue to get smaller and smaller as you run out of brads. So, that's a little way for you to realize you're getting low on brads or staples. So, while it's not connected, I'm going to load it up. The one thing I've found is that you want to play with your air pressure to uh, get your brads to set at the right level. If you want them in a little bit, if you want them right on the surface, you know, your staples the same way. You need to play with it because I've found it kind of changes. When I was on this MDF, it took like 80 to 90 PSI to get it to sit flat. But when I was on this whiteboard, 80, 90 would put it a good eighth inch in. So you might want to pull it back a little bit. Let's see. Right now, I am just a little bit short of 80, so I'm going to connect it. Now, the way the safety mechanism on this works is that you can pull the trigger and nothing will come out. You have to be depressing this. It has to be depressed. See, so if you pull the trigger before you depress it, it won't fire. It won't nail. So, finger off the trigger here. That's going through. Now these are just one and a quarter, so they're barely even making it through. You can barely even see it. Barely even making it through um, these. But if you notice, it's setting it right at on top. It's not making a whole lot of marks. So you want to kind of play with that. Any new tool, that's a good tip. Play around with it. See what, how it, how it works. How strong it needs to be. So again, that's barely making it through. So I wouldn't expect that to be a strong bond. But let's see how it does with this pine into the oak. Two quick and easy staples. Brads, I mean. Two quick and easy brads. That's on there pretty solid. I mean, I could get my hammer over here and pull it off. Actually, why not? Let's put the third one on there. And just to give you an idea, I mean, it'll come off. Anything will come loose. That's pretty solid. 
got those into there straight, solid. That one got left behind. Two of these got left behind in the board, so that shows they're getting in there. Um, I'm going to keep this review short and sweet. If you want to learn more about these, check out another video. This is the Central Pneumatic. I, uh, I have to say overall that I'm happy with it. It, uh, it does what I need as a weekend user and having fun in the shop. Um, if you're a professional and you're going to use this tool every single day, then you may want to invest in a little bit heftier tool. But, you know, for somebody that uses this on the weekends, a couple of times a week, you pull it out of the toolbox, I'm going to think it's going to do fine. I think it's going to get the job done for you and you'll be happy with it. So far, I am. Basically, I'd give it a uh, 5 out of 5, 4.5 out of 5 easily. I haven't tried a whole lot of other ones, so it's hard to give you a, a true, accurate review on that end. But I definitely think it's done everything expected out of it for the price for me. So I'm happy. Um, so we're going to keep it short and sweet. That's the end of the review. If you want to hear a little bit more about my story with the tool, I'm going to talk a little bit more. But thanks for watching. Peace. Hope you enjoyed it. For the rest of you, I'll give you a little bit more uh, story about this review and why I think it's a good tool. I'll tell a little secret on myself. I bought this tool to do a job and I didn't need it for that job. I got it done with some other stuff, so it kind of sat in my truck for a while. And one day I was cleaning out the truck and I had a uh, plastic bin in the back. And so I was cleaning all the stuff out and I threw this while it was still wrapped up in plastic in the box into this bin. Inadvertently, I left the bin sitting out next to my truck in the yard. Well, it rained a whole lot. And it was underneath some gutters, so it had some water filled up to a good, like, foot and a half of water in there. So I come back a couple of days later and find this tool in the box just floating in water. And I'm just thinking, oh my god, you dumbass. You know, you just wasted your money, screwed this thing up. So I uh, took my time, I unpacked it, unboxed it real carefully. It was wrapped in a plastic bag, so it, it was still soaked, though, inside and out. I took it all out, tried to save the manual a little bit. Um, here, I'll show you, I'm telling the truth, here's what the manual looked like after it was all over. I, uh, needless to say, this thing set soaked, submerged for a day or two before I came back to it. I was really careful to clean it really well and to get as much of the moisture off of it as I could, and, you know, I, uh, ran a few cycles through it without nails, ran air through it a good bit once I got it going, but... I have been using this thing without a single hiccup. It hasn't misfired. It hasn't messed me over once. So I'm uh, really impressed. There is a few spots where you might be able to see down in here that little bolt rusted and a little bit of rust on the on the clasp of uh, that in the front. But other than that, you know, I was able to get it all off. This tool is still working fine. I made sure to oil it down really, really well to make up for my stupid mistake. Uh, and like I said, you know, y'all can comment about how dumb I am in the video, but I have to say that speaks a little bit for the tool. You know, it could sit submerged for a day or two and still come back and work. So if you enjoyed this, let me know. Thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helped you make a decision on it. It's a good tool. I uh, hope to get some more years get some years of use out of it and if I have a problem I'll check back in and maybe do another review video but tell me what you think take it easy peace